And of course, there are a lot of people out there who are seeking to increase their baseline levels of dopamine without taking any prescription pharmaceutical compounds. And nowadays there exist a lot of supplements to do that. The two most common ones that are directly within the dopamine pathway are mercunipurines, which is actually a velvety bean whose contents are L-dopa. Believe it or not, the content of this bean is the precursor to dopamine. So mercunipurines is sold over the counter, at least in the United States, and it literally is the precursor to dopamine. Meaning if you take it, you will experience very large increases in dopamine. Those increases are transient and very, very intense. And in fact, if you look at the constellation of effects of mercunipurines, what you find is that they're pretty striking and they look a lot like, if not identical to L-DOPA. The most obvious of those is in the context of Parkinson's disease. There are at least five studies that have shown that mercunipurines can reduce the symptoms of Parkinson's disease much in the same way that L-DOPA can reduce the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And that shouldn't come as any surprise given what I just told you that mercunipurines is essentially L-DOPA. It also can reduce a particular hormone called prolactin. Dopamine and prolactin tend to be in somewhat push-pull fashion. When dopamine is up, prolactin is down and vice versa. Prolactin is involved in milk letdown in women. It's involved in setting the refractory period for uh, sex after ejaculation in males. The reason mating can occur and then not occur after ejaculation is because of an increase in prolactin. Macunaprines is often used to blunt, blunt prolactin. And there are actually a couple of studies showing that it can indeed do that. Macunaprines has a number of other effects that lie in the sort of sex and reproduction pathway that are worth noting. Sperm concentration, sperm quality is actually greatly increased by mercunipurines. These are kind of curious effects until you understand a little bit more about the biology of dopamine, which I'll mention in a moment. But there are several studies, uh, four in fact, that describe how mercunipurines can increase sperm count, sperm quality, and sperm motility. So for those of you seeking to conceive children, uh, mercunipurines might be an interesting choice if you're interested in exploring non-prescription compounds. However, I should mention that anytime you consume a substance that increases dopamine by mimicking dopamine or acting as a direct precursor to dopamine, there's almost inevitably a crash or a reduction in the baseline in dopamine that we referred to previously. So many people who take mercunipurines feel really elevated, really motivated, really alert, all the sorts of things that one would expect from a dopaminergic drug, which mercunipurines is, and then they feel a low or a reduction in drive and excitement and enthusiasm after the drug wears off, just like they would with any other dopamine-increasing compound. 